Let's be very reverent, please. As we open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. There's something I want us to look at quickly before we we drink. Can I, if you have a cup, can, I, can you lift it up? Let me see. Lift up your cup. Let me see. Me to have my own cup. Everybody has a cup. Eh? Hold it while I read. First Corinthians, chapter ten, two verses, fifteen and sixteen. Hold it in your hand. I speak as to wise men. Judge you what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Somebody shout this is the cup of blessing. Say it again. Say, it is the communion of the blood of Christ. Say it again. Say it. Say, this is the cup of blessing. God bless you. May just drop your cup and just listen for a few moments. I want to bring out something here. Amen. Now, if you hold that cup, if you hold that cup, praise the Lord. Bring water. Anybody, any water here? Any water? Now, now, if I don't tell you, because I announced, now if I don't tell you this is water, you will not know this is water. Listen very well, oh. Mm, who are going to use now? Uh, Larry, da, come. She's the Larry, da. Hold this cup. Hold on very well. Close your eyes, self. You come. Watch something, oh. If I don't tell you what is inside that cup, you will not know what is inside that cup. Correct? Correct? You don't know whether it's a gogoro that is inside that cup. Tea, coffee, wine. Bia Oburkutu. Close your eyes now. Watch what will happen. Open your hand. What happened? No microphone. Eh? Somebody tapped me and the water spilled. Somebody bumped inside of you. Yes. Bump inside of you like yes. this. Slap you like this. Yes. Hit you like this. Eh? Now. Now. What happened to, to you? What happened to you? Somebody hit you. And the cup here spilled all over the place. Yes, sir. What is it that spilled over? So what happened to you? It is not just that somebody hit you. That is the problem. The problem is that what you are holding spilled all over. Yes, sir. Correct? Now, if it was tea that was inside this 
water, if it hits you, what will spill all over? Tea. Tea. If it is hot water, hot, that was inside here, somebody bumps on you like this, what will spill over? Hot water. So it is what is in this cup that when somebody hits you, that it will spill over. Yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. Whatever is inside this cup, the action of hitting you will make us know what is inside. Yes, sir. We will never have known what is inside this cup if somebody did not push you. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sit down. It is what is that cup signifies every one of us sitting down here today. You will not know what is inside of you until somebody find your trouble. A am I correct? Everybody sitting je -je 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 now, but how shall we know what is in you? What is in your cup? I want us to just think on that before we we take that cup. Whatever is inside of you, you cannot give what you don't have. You cannot give what you don't have. You will always give what you have. You can fake it. You can fake it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can pretend. But what is in you will come out when somebody touches you. Hallelujah. Rose flower is very beautiful to look at. Very beautiful to look at. But the fragrance of rose flower is only produced after it is squeezed. And Jesus Christ is described as the rose of Sharon because it was after he was squeezed that what is inside of him he became the balm of Gilead. You will never have known that there is salvation in the blood of Jesus until he was squeezed at the cross of Calvary. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you squeeze that rose flower, then you see that it's very sweet. Very, very sweet. The same thing too, bitter leaf. When you squeeze bitter leaf, test it, you will know that that leaf is bitter. But it has to be squeezed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now the truth about it is so that you will understand something the Lord Jesus Christ tried to bring out in Mark chapter 7. Let's read it. Mark chapter 7. Praise God. From verse 1. It says, Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with, I mean, uh, with defiled that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands, often they eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be, which they have received to hold as the washing of our cups and pots, uh, present vessels and of tables then the Pharisees and scribes asked him 
Why walk not the disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said unto them, Well, you know why I'm bringing this up? I'm emphasizing something. For those of us who deceive ourselves and claim to be Christians by our concentrating on our outward appearance. The outward appearance only will not do in our Christian faith. Concentrating on only outward appearance produces hypocrisy in Christendom. So let's look beyond not wearing trousers, not wearing the tight uh, cloth by women, wearing suits, because there are some inter-message churches that even in Lagos here, no brother goes to the church without tie and shirt with coat. You must dress and look neat. Dress that you cannot wear to go before a governor or before a man that wants to interview you for a job. Don't wear it and come to church. It's wrong. Make they get opportunity like this, they talk to them, Joe. It's wrong. I'm telling you this thing. That is why many of you, your conditions don't change because you despise the Lord. You dishonor the Lord. You keep your clothes. You wait for a party to attend. Then you wear it. Then to go to church. A party with the Holy Ghost. Church service. Then you will not wear your best. When are you waiting to wear that cloth? Of now, anything they give, I get any new cloth. The first place I wear it to the church. And it's not because I'm standing to preach, make you for see me. It is just my habit. It has been like that. I, I mean, it's a blessing from God to me. Okay, so let's read on now. Verse 6. He answered and said unto them, Well has Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, these people honored me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things you do. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own tradition. And verse 14, And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me every one of you and understand. There is nothing from without, outside, a man that entry in into, into, uh, entry into him can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Listen. This is so important because from my observation, that's why I'm bringing this exhortation in this communion. From my observation, we preachers of the entire message, we give so much attention, so much emphasis to outward appearance until in the whole of Christendom, entire message produces the highest level of hypocrisy. I have observed it. The entire message is supposed to produce through Christianity in and out. But because we the preachers, we accept you that you are a believer because you don't paint your face. You don't cover with it. You don't do this and do that. You don't wear trousers. Therefore, you are bride. You are bride. You are bride. You are bride. And 
that makes room for hypocritic Christianity. People are just hypocrites to be accepted. Oh, something very interesting happened last uh, Sunday in Akwanga. I was with my wife, my junior sister, same father, same mother, my mother's last born. She came and I know how to be paint, 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 painting, you know, paint, earring, paint, everything, paint them out, paint. So when she came to see me, I noticed she didn't paint her face, paint, and I scream, I always, I scream, I say, yeah, Pastor Godwin is working hard in this Akwanga, oh, you no longer paint your... I didn't see paint again. Not it. She laughed. And this was the statement she said. She made. She said, you know, when you are among people, you should identify with them. If this is how they dress, you should dress like that with them. So it was not a revelation. <laughs> It was so that she too can be among them. I said, oh, Father, I have rejoiced too early. She has not yet believed it. Maybe in the evening as we are ministering the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Anointing was carrying people everywhere. She stood somewhere and she was looking. Yeah, me this one. Which one be this one? I saw the pillar of light hovering around her. I stepped down from the altar and I walked to her. I said, you better be in the spirit. There is an angel of God around you. And I turned to climb the altar again. Before I look back, they were already carrying her. <laughs> The angel was dealing with her. I was so happy. I looked again. My senior sister, one of my senior sisters again, who was also a member of that same church now, they were carrying her, bringing her from the back. I said, God, now me, you come visit like this. Oh, let's clap our hands for this Jesus. Oh, you're holding your cup. You can't clap. Praise the Lord. I know that that is what they need. To be able to have true conversion. If you are dropping, painting your face because you are attending bread assembly, you are a hypocrite. So that you will belong among us, you are a hypocrite. It is not what you paint your, paint your leg. Paint your mouth. Paint that defile you. It is what comes out of you that defiles you. So catch it now. If you defile my temple, him, if you defile the temple of God, the Bible says, he will God destroy. So, so you can now go now to know what is, what does it mean to defile the temple. It is not what comes in. It is what comes out. And the truth is, it is a product of what is inside that produces what you put on. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. But we also know it can produce hypocrisy. So that serpents can masquerade, tears can masquerade and look like us. Listen, church. But there is a way to find out who you are. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, now. What are those things that come out of you that defile you? They are what the Bible calls works of the flesh. Matthew 23. Matthew 23, verse 25. It's a scripture there. Let's read it also. Matthew 23, verse 25. This is how he's put it. 
When he was talking about those hypocrites, this is the way he put it again. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. Enter message, pastors that I know. This scripture is for you. Holiness churches that I know. Holiness churches. Holiness revival movement. Bride Assembly Church. All of us, holy, 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 holy. This is what he says. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. He said, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within. They are full of extortion and what? Excesses. Within. They are full of extortion and excesses. And what are these excesses that he speaks about? They are found in Galatians chapter 5. Let's read it from verse 19. That is the excesses he's talking about. Verse 19 of Galatians chapter 5. Now the works of the flesh, these are the excesses, are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, go on, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, rot, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. He concluded by saying, of the which I tell you before, he's always saying it, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. And these are the excesses he's talking about. These excesses are the excesses of the heart which is typed in the law with the law, the ordinance of circumcision circumcision is the removal of excess flesh and this time around circumcision is no more of the first skin but now circumcision is what? removal of the excesses of the heart for out of the abundance of the heart. Hallelujah. He said, guide your heart diligently. For out of it are the issues of life. Excesses. Excesses of, of the flesh. And Psalm 1, let's read it. From verse 1. One, two, three, four, five, six verses there. Blessed, listen carefully now. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And that's where I am going. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. A tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. A man that is like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth his fruit in his season. You are planted by the rivers of water and you bring forth your fruit 
in his season. What are these fruits that you will bring forth? Then Galatians chapter 5, where we just read from verse 16 now. Praise God. Hallelujah. See the way he put it. This I said then, walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. Walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. A man that is planted by the rivers of water is one that will walk in the spirit. Okay, let's read on. It says, For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Go to verse 22 now. Verse 22. Let's read up to verse 26. But the fruit, take note, verse 3 of Psalm 1 says, you bring forth your fruit in a season. The tree will bring forth its fruit in a season. There is season. All fruits are not produced in the same season. Natural fruit. Am I correct? Are we together? All trees, fruits are not produced in the same season. There is season for mango. There is season for orange. There is season for tangerine. Even within the citrus family, there are different, different seasons for all of them. There is season for papa. There is season for everything. There is season for everything. Let's read on. But the fruit of the spirit is love. So, there is a season of love. There is a season for joy. There is a season for peace. There is a season for long suffering. There is a season for gentleness. There is a season for goodness. And there is a season for faith. There is a season for meekness. There's a season for temperance. These are the fruits that you bring forth in his season. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What is the season? Uh, 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 uh. What is the season for love? And I want you to think, we don't have time to talk one by one. What is the season there for? For joy? I, I, you, you, you have to make me know you understand. Eh? Uh, Jesus, brother Jesus, Jesus, waiting. Give him microphone. What is the season to produce love, the fruit of love? Uh, for uh, example, when you see a brother in need, the Bible like, says, um, Yes, that is one of that's the season. What is the season for joy? Answer me. Maybe during praise session in the church. The season for joy. What is the season for peace? Mm -hmm. A moment of trials. What is the prayer? <laughs> I know everybody is answering your own one by one. God bless you, be seated. I just want you to think. What is the season for long suffering? Long suffering. Amen. When somebody you should give quick notice, you decided to still keep him. When you have every reason to display otherwise, because Christianity is a life of living positively against negativity. When you are supposed to strike, you instead love. When you are supposed to hate, you instead forgive. When you are supposed to strike back, instead you forgive. You let go. 
When you're supposed to give tit for tat, you have only goodness to give. You don't have any tat to give. When you're supposed to cry, that is when you say, my redeemer live it. Faith. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. When you're supposed to be proud because of some position you have reached, that is the season for meekness. When you're supposed to vibrate, when you hit me, you spill my tea, my coffee, you, my, 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 you don't see, you don't see, you don't see, you, 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 you match, you match me, you, you blind, you blind when you match me. Amen. And the CMO, even when you say, come and put offering, and then the place is crowded. And they see, my address, as I be see something, you will see like this, there may be one sister just drop and then turn like this and hit somebody at the back. And they see, That is the season for temperance. Why you should have reacted? Amen. When you are tempted, pushed, pushed, pushed to react, instead they see temperance because that is the season. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. In Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 1, I love the admonishment of Apostle Paul here, and I, I really love to read it from verse 1. He said, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also had loved us and has given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savoir. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. Neither filthiness. And he's mentioning fornication. I've always said something. Church, listen, let's be sincere so that you will know how to direct your prayers. Somebody has approached me. He said, every time you talk against fornication, against fornication, you keep talking against uh, ministers, men of God, that uh, are fornicated and they blah, blah, blah. The Bible says, he who thinks he stand, take heed, lest he fall. And this has always been my reply. You say, now Satan, Abi, Satan is not a fool. Listen, Satan is very, very wise in his ministry of pulling down someone. Before Satan will come to you to tempt you, he will always tempt you in the area of your weakness. Satan cannot send a woman to tempt me to fornicate because he will look inside of me, he will not see fornication there. Satan cannot come and use me to steal to go and cheat a brother, collect your money and refuse. You know, they do it. Christians do that kind of thing. Because in me, he knows there is no covetousness in me. Hallelujah. Satan cannot use gossip to hear me, chon, 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 chon for here, then use it to finish me by going, you know, later on, they will call me Come and say this in the way you talk. Then shame go catch me. Because I know they do chon, 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 chon. anything I cannot say in front of you. I will not say it behind you. If you heard that I say something, if I have not told you, then you are only coming to hear it again from me. Because yes, I told him so because this is who you are. Praise the Lord. It's always in the area of your weakness. That is why they say, guide your heart. Guide it. Guide it very well. Everybody should know, this is the area of my weakness. And guide it so that when you see him coming, you run. 